So the first thing is to recognize the notation. So f of x equals, okay, this right here, okay, it looks kind of a strange symbol. Or sometimes what they do is they put these little bars on the bottom, okay, these little, these little bars right here. And what that indicates is that we're rounding down. So you round down, okay, to the, to the, low, to the next integer. So I'll show you an example. So see if you have negative 1.99. So what you do is you go to your number line, negative 1.99 is right here. You round down, which is on the number line, you round to the left. So this would put us here at negative two. Now, if we're at negative 1.1, that's right here. See, it's almost negative one, but you're not quite to negative one yet. So you round down to negative two again. Negative one, we're right on the integer value. So that's still gonna stay at negative one. Negative 0.9 is right here. You round again to the left. You always wanna remember you round to the left when you're doing this greatest integer function. Negative 0.5, you're here. Again, you're rounding down to negative one. Zero, see so you're on that integer value, so that stays at zero. 0.5, you're right here. You round again down to zero to the left. One, okay, we're right on the integer value, so we stay at one. 1.1, you round again down to one. 1.99, almost to two, but you have to round down to that next uh, you know, integer there, so that's one. And then two, we're at two. Now, the reason I did this, and you might wanna do this for yourself too as you're graphing this, is pick some values that are on the integer values and also in between integer values Think of the number line and always round to the left, round down. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna plot these over here on the graph. So at negative 1.99, which is right here, we said that we're at negative two. So we're basically, I'm gonna put a point right there. Negative 1.1, we're over here at negative two. Okay, as soon as we get to negative one, it jumps up, now you're at negative one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a, a, a closed point right there. Over here I'm gonna write an open point. So what happened is we were approaching negative one, as soon as we got to negative one, it jumped up to negative one. See, at negative 0.5, you're at negative one. At uh, negative 0.1, you're still at negative one. But as soon as you get to x equals zero, we're open here, we jump up to zero here. So what you can see is after you plot a few of these, you're gonna get the pattern, and then you can just go ahead and draw those stairs or steps uh, from there. And you'll notice that when you're doing this, see how the closed uh, portion of the graph is on the left and the open is on the right. So this is your basic graph and it continues up to the right and down to the left like that. But let's look at some other variations. So somebody was asking me on, on another video that I did, you know, what happens if you have like y equals negative greatest integer of x? Well, you see this negative, what do you think that does to the graph? So these are called, you know, transformations. What do you think that negative does? Well, what it does is it makes all these values the opposite sign. So if it's positive, now it's gonna be negative. If it's negative, it's gonna be positive. So it reflects it over the x-axis. So if we were graphing this, just to draw a little sketch here, normally it looks like this, right? And it would go up to this next stair, but it's gonna reflect, so you're gonna be going down now like this, right? And so on. Okay, now what do you think for this next one? Y equals two times the greatest integer of x. What do you think this two does to the graph? Okay, well, what's interesting, see if you're comparing this one and this one, see this two is outside, okay, it's in front of. What this is gonna do is gonna multiply all these values over here times two, so it's gonna be a vertical stretch. So what's gonna happen if we graph this one, let's just see if I can plot this here for us, is it's gonna be a vertical stretch. So normally, you're gonna be right here, okay, zero times two is still zero, but as soon as you get to one, instead of being at one, it's gonna be at two now, so you're stretching it, right? Instead of being at, uh, over here at uh, two, now you're gonna be at four, okay? So this is gonna jump up like this. And same thing when you're over here at negative one, now you're gonna be down here at negative two. Okay, so you're with me on that. So the one in front, that's gonna be a vertical stretch, or if it's like a half, it would be a vertical shrink or compress. Now, what do you think this three does to the graph right here? Notice this grouped with the x, it's inside of those brackets, okay, those greatest integer brackets. What do you think that three does to the graph? Now, if you, if you said that it's going to compress it, okay, horizontally, you're absolutely right. The one that's grouped with the x actually has the opposite effect. So what this is actually gonna do is actually gonna make these stairs over here one third as long. So if I can sketch that here for us, what this would look like, okay, if I can just draw a few of these here for us, is you would go like this, you would say, I'm going up to one third, then I'm jumping up to one, then I'm going to two thirds, then I'm jumping up to two, then I'm going over here to one, then I'm jumping up. So what's happening is it's actually compressing it 
horizontally. Now, if this was y equals x divided by 3, then it would have the opposite effect. It would actually stretch these, okay, these stairs here, these steps. They would actually be three units long before it jumps up to the next stair. So this has been a little bit uh, how to work with greatest integer functions and graphing them. I hope this helped you understand it a lot better. Subscribe to the channel. Check out more math tutoring videos on my YouTube channel, Mario's Math Tutoring. And I look forward to helping you in the future videos. I'll talk to you soon.